What's up nerds? They asked me to do another one of these reports on your next move Grand Chess Tour. Brilliant name by the way. Could we make that even longer somehow? Is that possible? Anyway, they wanted more highlights and I said whatever, I'll do it. But I don't want to have to talk about the Patsas anymore. Let me focus on the stars. And they said, of course Mr. Radio, anything you want would be great hype for us. So here we are. They played some more rapid games in Leuven, Belgium. Day three of Rapid is over. Big, big news. Mm, I don't know where to start. Shall we start with the world champion? Magnus Carlsen, is he still world champion? I think he is. You don't lose a title after not winning a classical tournament for a year, right? No, no, that's not a thing. And Magnus Carlsen had his moment of glory on day number two. When he corrected something that has been bothering me for a long time. The absence of a certain, dare I say, ornithological opening. The lack of a certain avian variation. I'm of course talking about going 1f4. The so-called bird opening. Fantastic opening. And Magnus Carlsen brought it back against Vladimir Kramnik. What's not to like about the move 1f4? Should they do e5, you go e4. You trick them into the king's gambit. One of the most exciting openings there are. And if they play something dull like Kramnik did, d5. You go knight f3, g3, bishop g2, short castles, and then you're pretty much winning already. You either prepare d3, e4, you have like a king's Indian and tempo up with the pawn already on f4, or you can play my favorite plan, queen to e1, then h3, then g4, then queen to h4, and checkmate on the king. So it's very hard to stop these things. And that's pretty much what happened in the game. So easy win for Magnus Carlsen. And of course the victory was not enough for him. He had to go to Twitter and brag about the whole thing. Let's see what he did. He went on, where is that tweet? Went on to tweet about the bird. And this tweet, let me explain what's going on here. He of course is bragging, but it's also an obvious and desperate attempt to get noticed by some dumb TV show called Family Guy. Mm, that's a show that made sure that everybody knows that the bird is the word. That's where the chess world is at, apparently. We have a world champion who was featured in Donald Duck and on The Simpsons and now he's trying to befriend or to become Peter Griffin. Okay, at least he seems to have given up for now to try to look like a cartoon character himself. I think that phase is over Magnus. It would be nice if he could make sure it stays that way. Anyway, you wanna be on Family Guy? You wanna be Peter Griffin? This is what you're dreaming of? You happy now? Here you go. Enjoy. Congratulations. How about reading a book instead? Going to a museum. You think we can keep up the charade of chess players being brainy if all you know is cartoons? Think this will still happen? I can't believe it. Here you go. They used to think we are smart. Even on your silly little family guy show. I don't think this will happen much longer. By the way, I don't mean reading an opening book. Keep playing F4, I enjoy that. It's not like your mainstream openings on day three help you to keep the pace. Three draws for Carlsen on day three, that's mirroring like Anish Giri's score. Not catching Wesley So, because Wesley So keeps cruising. Do we have the standing somewhere? Here we go. Wesley So leads the competition. 14 points. I don't know how you get 14 points after nine rounds, but I'm sure they've done the math with Brainiacs behind the Grand Chess Tour. Anyway, do you think Wesley So is trying to become Family Guy? You think he's wasting his time with Peter Griffin? Let me tell you what Wesley So is doing. He is becoming a stone cold assassin. Draw with black, win with white, no problem. Eliminating all human emotions and silly errors from his game. That's what he's doing. Learn all the theory there is. He doesn't want to be Peter Griffin. He's becoming Mr. Spock. I got a picture to prove it. Let's look that up. Here you go. You see that? It's uncanny. He looks exactly the same already and he's also getting there chess-wise. He's not quite there yet. Let me show you what's still missing in Wesley Souls game. There are still some human errors, but he is working hard diligently on eliminating those. That's why I have such tremendous faith in this young man here against Jan Nepom, whatever his name is. He blundered a pawn, he allowed queen takes c4, but his opponent didn't take it. So draw, no problem. Then Wesley So went on to do more great things against Levon Aronia with the white pieces. Look at this. 
Queen sacrifice, no problem for Wesley. Queen a1, Queen a1, rook e6. And all these pawns, all these pawns will win the day. You think the lone queen can hurt Wesley so? No, it cannot. Therefore, Wesley so, of course, extremely well deserved in the lead. Let's see if we find more things he has in common with Mr. Spock. Because I think these things are there. Look at it, it is uncanny. What's Mr. Spock saying? Computers make excellent and efficient servants, but I have no wish to serve under them. And who's better at using computers nowadays than Wesley So to prepare his first 30 moves in the opening? Let me tell you who's better at that. Nobody is. So Wesley So, shout out to you. Excellent stuff. Let's look at the standings again. And oh, look who's in second place as usual. It's the Frenchman Maxime vachier Lagraf. Now, I'd love to give you my true opinions on this guy. <clears throat> but unfortunately, I'm not allowed to. Let me tell you what happened. I ran into the guy on the golf course and he came up to me and started talking to me. He said, Je voudrais que vous ne parliez pas de moi. And I was like, dude, speak English. He said, Selfie et vous ne parlez pas de moi à la radio. Uh, I was like, whatever, you want a selfie? Let's take a selfie. So we took this which is a total mess. Let's bring it up. Where is this dumb picture? I'm embarrassed to even show you guys this picture. Here we are. You can't even see my face properly. So that didn't do anything, but, I, but whatever. We took the selfie and then he brought in this other guy who we called Francois, I believe. And this other guy spoke a bit of English. He was like, you have contract, so you can no longer speak about Maxime now because he took selfie with you. I am witness. Absolutely disgusting behavior, of course, disgusting trick. And that goes to show you how this man plays chess as well. Maxime Vachiela Graf. He tricked the great Vichy Anand in equally sad, disgusting fashion, where everybody with a bit of dignity would already have resigned. Look at this position. Black is, of course, completely lost as usual when MVL, as they call him, plays as Nydorf. But Vishiana, instead of closing the game off with like queen a7, controlling this square and keeping his rook covered, winning on the spot, he went queen b6, same idea, but look at the dumb trick that MVL came up with here. Queen g8, sad, attacking both pieces and somehow he weaseled his way out and went on to win this game. That's how you score your points, MVL. You proud of yourself? Congratulations. Sad that this guy is in second place. I'm not even allowed to talk about him. And whatever, what else can I tell you guys? I think I'm done with this Grand Chess Tour. I know you losers will probably spend the whole weekend watching the Blitz. Oh, so many exciting big questions, storylines to follow. Who will win? Who will win? Will Magnus catch Wesley? Will the French guy win a tournament once in his life? Will Jabava do better than one out of 18? I could not care less, honestly. I'd rather watch like a family guy marathon than having to follow more of these guys playing blitz chess. I'm out of here. Bye.